uh, welcome all of you nana here and then uh, we are now uh, starting the next day session now so we are continuing on the costing actually I mean, yesterday i explained about the uh, what's called the actual cost the first and first cost uh, some people you know, called me and then they said they're highly confused so i thought of even a uh, demoing it out now so let me begin with the demo of actual cost you're going to have a demo of actual cost <clears throat> But I don't have a scenario to demonstrate. That is the biggest problem for me. Uh, I will now do with the help of a miscellaneous result and issue actually. So since I don't have a, a scenario, whatever I will not do it with it now. <clears throat> so we go there. So I have one uh, file on this one. So actual cost demo. I just made it now. Uh, actual cost demo is a 59th documentation on additional four actually. On the additional four, we have the actual cost demo, which is a 59th document. And that will be one. So I'll explain you about what exactly is not. It is nothing but a first in first out cost. So in EMIS, we have uh, two things. One is a FIFO and LIFO. So standard average LIFO and FIFO are the four methods in EMIS. Here we have standard average and FIFO only. LIFO is not there in future. <clears throat> so now, what exactly is an is an is a, is a, is a actually a fictitious example, and then I'm going to perform a miscellaneous uh, transactions to demonstrate it. But I don't have any actual use case on this now. And if you have any use case, please uh, pause it on so that everybody will be understanding it now. Actually, <clears throat> so a share broker got orders from two customers for the purchase of ONGC shares. It's all old. nowadays. Uh, nobody does any manual uh, purchase. Everybody is using the DMAT account and other things. So it's a old example. Okay? <clears throat> so customer A orders for, uh, uh, for he's ordering first for 70 shares. And then the customer B is ordering for 300 shares next. Now, the share broker is now making a purchase as below. At 11 a.m., he goes and then buys the ONGC shares at 100 rupees. He got only 500. So the total he needs is what? 1050. And then out of which he purchased only 500 shares at 100 rupees. He, he couldn't get it in the market. So at 11.15, he could buy another 300 at 110. And then at 11.30, he bought the remaining balance at 120. So now, uh, he is now going to give it to them. Fine. I will not demo this scenario as a miscellaneous results and issue. Fine. I have not created an item. And then set the cost profile. Fine. So the first activity is what? We have to set a cost profile for uh, your uh, actual cost. Now, fine. I have already set it now. Fine. So I will not show it to you for some The cost profile has been set now. Fine. We can set up a maintenance. We will not set up the cost profile for this now. Go there. <clears throat> Go to search. And then manage cost profiles. We go to the cost profile now, right? manage cost profile. And then I have set up a, a actual cost profile also. If you go there and then uh, cost profile starts with J10 and then go on the query. So we have got three cost profiles available on this now, fine. Uh, one is what? Uh, the asset cost profile, <clears throat> asset cost profile. One is an expense cost profile, because since I have not done it, is a lab exercise for you to do it now. One is a standard cost profile I made it now. Right? And then one actual, uh, actual cost profile. If you go on and have a look at the standard cost profile and then create it now, right? Standard cost profile. Everything is same except the costing method is a standard cost. The cost method is a standard cost for this. Okay, right? So other, other things are exactly the same. And one more problem is when I am using my cost mapping, I have made only four now. I will not show it to you. I don't know why it's not coming. It, it normally used to give an error actually. It was not giving any error at all. Go to set up and maintenance. I will now uh, show you about where I simulate the error to show it to you. But this time, it didn't give any error at all. I don't know why it's so. Non-recoverable tax. Huh? Non-recoverable tax. Ah, it is not giving me at all. Fine. Not in nothing, sir. So somebody make an R&D fine if you're getting it. Uh, or why it is not coming for me. That is what I wanted to know. So go to the circuit. Uh, last week also, I tested the throw the error, actually. So I only made five. The four only. The fifth one is not made at all. Whereas somebody, PM7, who is this PM7? And the PM7 has made all the five. Right? All the five has made it now. Right? For him, maybe. So here I had it has to throw an error now. And I have uh, taken a copy of the error message also here. See, mapping said error. Right? Just to show it to others. No point. It will say mapping does not exist for the component mapping group. The component mapping and set name right? on the J05 I made it now. It was saying what non recoverable tax. Then afterwards I added the error vanished. I want to show like that, but here I'm not coming at all. I don't know what is that, uh, why it is not coming. So something it is not picking up or I don't know what exactly. So 
So this is one which I am unable to demonstrate it. So the one. So the cost profile for the standard cost is like the fine. I will not I have made one for the actual cost. No fine. The actual cost go there. Then click on that. Edit it. If you edit it, this is actual cost. Fine. The cost printer is actual cost. And then yet uh, everything else is same actually. <clears throat> so here, if you see, if you put actual cost, the mapping is not coming at all. Fine. The mapping is not coming. So it will be for use first receipt layer cost. It is coming as a, a receipt layer cost. So whatever has been received, what happens? It will be using it now. Fine. Drop it down. Use the last receipt. So by this method, you can even make it as a LIFO also. Yeah, got it. So LIFO is not there. But if you miss the last receipt, that becomes a LIFO. So this is for the first LIFO, and then this is for the LIFO. So whichever way you want, you can do it now. Okay, all these things are there. so everything is there. So in the cost profile, it is all there. Actual cost. Now, when you create a item, what happens if you go there? Click on now. <clears throat> we'll now have a look at the uh, what's called default cost profile. <clears throat> yeah, here it is. There. Manage default cost profile. We go and see. So we have made for our cost book cost for combination one of them as a default actually. So cost R equal to what? J10. Fine. Now say starts with. So go there. J10 is the one. Enter in now. Fine, mind out. We have made one as asset cost profile, other one as an expense cost profile, and then consign. And remember, whenever you make uh, one of them as a cost profile, go there, click on it now. And then you cannot modify it at all. Now we have now already transacted on asset now. Fine. Asset cost profile is the one. I don't know whether we can modify it or not. Fine. I'm not very sure about it. Go there. This coming is a editable actually. But in the item, what happens if you go on and see item is not possible to edit at all. Asset cost profile, I'm unable to. But the default cost profiles can be changed with it. When you make a change from that time onwards, uh, uh, that will be the asset cost profile for all items. So uh, uh, this is how it's coming now. <clears throat> okay, fine. So you can even change the default. But on the item level, if you go on and query, I have already transacted on the asset now. And then expense and concern I have not transacted. So there you will not be able to uh, do anything at all on that. <clears throat> so if you go there, so click on it, go down, and then uh, yeah. so go there, consigned. If you're not able to have that thing at all, <clears throat> okay, cancel it. <clears throat> Come on up. So if you go to the item cost profile. We will not have a look at it. Right? Manage item cost profile. Manage percentage. Item percentage. Cost percentage. Profile percentage. And then have a look at it. So manage item cost profile. I will not query my existing item. Right? So item starts with J10. <clears throat> underscore cost. And then make a search. Now, right? You go on and search for it. And then if you try to edit it. Since the item is an asset item. And then we already transacted it. Right? So it, now. it will not allow you to change that profile. Actually, if you edit it. So asset cost profile cannot be edited, but the expense and consign I are not done for the item. Right? So they are still editable. So the moment you make a what's called a transaction on the particular profile, the profile cannot be changed on the item. Right? But the default for the cost or cost book can be changed. For the cost or and cost book, the default profiles can be changed. But an item level you cannot override it. It is not override. So let us now go there. We look at the difference between this cost profile and item cost profile. Item cost profile will override the default cost profiles. Whatever you have written on the default cost profile, that can be overridden at this line level. We are overriding it. Right? So now, what happens? Uh, now, any item by default, it will be what? It is a, for me, it is a uh, perpetual average. Now, I am going to change it to actual cost. Item level is a top priority. Okay, fine. We will go on and create an item and then do it. So we will go on and create an item and then we will know override the actual cost to uh, uh, rather uh, perpetual average to actual cost go to the product management and then go to the product information management and then we'll locate an item and then we'll override it so click on it we'll go to create item is a j10 <clears throat> It's okay, fine. Go that one. Everything is coming. Thank you. Okay, the template gets applied, but then ignore the warning because somebody is now working on the EFF actually. Thank you. Honestly, the way it's coming, go there, and then this time I'll make the item simple actually. <clears throat> so that we can very easily go to the item. So it's a J10 underscore two. I will not just put like that. Right? 
So it'll be easy for us to put it in the point. I will not put the description. So that's it. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'll not go to the specifications so and then item is going to have what? A cost also. A list price will be that one that you want purchasing. But I am unable to understand about how to demonstrate it. So I know you took a very simple way of demonstrating using miscellaneous issues, miscellaneous group now. What the associations and may associate my child or not. If anybody has got a use case, please give me so that the people will be benefited from this one. Get another number now. Will not associate our child or choose the child or and click on apply and done fine with that. So J10 underscore 2 is now created. So go there and then I will not save it. So when I start to transact, it automatically takes the what perpetual average. Now I'm going to override at the item level. So I'll not go there. Let me override at the item level. <clears throat> go to the setup and maintenance. Internal search now. It's what's called manage item cost profile. And item cost profile. So here I will now create a new one. I click on plus one. I'm not going to create a port. I'm not going to query it actually. I'm not going to create. I click on plus one. I'm going to query it. I'm going to create a new one. So the cost org is J10 and then give a tab. So cost book is J10 and then give a tab now. Remember, every in the costing, everything is a cost org, cost book combination. And then if you're going for multiple cost orgs or multiple cost books, and then the multiple uh, uh, your uh, what's called uh, uh, Profit center business unit, PCBU. Fine. You must be very careful, actually. Fine. Uh, uh, if you are not very clear on this, please do not uh, R&D on it, fine. the uh, client location. You must have a very clear uh, understanding. But J10, then give a tab now. J10 underscore 2. J10 underscore 2. And then click on search now. Got it. Now, click on OK. Now, the asset cost profile, I'm going to override now. J10. So it is normally uh, by default. The default profile is what? It is a perpetual average. Fine, go there. I will not go to what? Uh, I will not go to asset cost profile. Fine, actual cost profile. I have no overriding it with actual cost profile. Fine. It is an actual cost profile. Actual cost. Fine, go there. Okay. So that's it. Fine, go there. The remaining I am not interested upon. Fine, go there. So that is it. So the item is an asset cost profile. When I click on seven post. That's it. Fine, go there. So it will not uh, uh, follow the actual cost. Actual cost is nothing but a first in first out or a loss in first out. Click on seven post. Now, let us now go on and receive it. This is for any particular item. Ah, yeah, particular item. Item so level, we can overwrite. For that item, it will overwrite the actual default profile. The default profile, exactly. That item will now overwrite the default profile. So let us now make a miscellaneous reserve to 500. So this guy has purchased uh, 500 and 100 cost. Now, let us now do it. So we'll now make all the three transactions over here. Click on it. Go there. And then I'll now go to the what's called product. Supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. Then go to the inventory management and then we will now perform. <coughs> click on. We will now perform a miscellaneous result for this one. So click on the create miscellaneous result. So the type is miscellaneous result. So miscellaneous result one. So account is uh, uh, 0100. Fine. 1410. I'm putting it up. So use current cost. No. Fine. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to have my own cost of my And I add it to the report. So it's a J10 underscore two is the item. Go there. And then I will now populate the only sub inventory available here now. And then what I'm going to do 500 at 100. 500 at 100, I'm going to do. So I'll now put a quantity of 500. And then click on the edit details and I'm going to say the cost, the transactional cost. Since I'm not using the current inventory cost, I can say at, the, at what cost I'm going to bring it in now. So click on that unit cost, unit cost details. I will not put it as 100 now. So click on plus now. So here, non recordable taxes also coming. Come on here. I don't understand. I'm not getting an error. I want to have an error. I'm not coming. So 100. Right? So 100 is the uh, price. Fine. Click on OK and then click on submit. Right? So we have to submit so that what happens? We'll be having different time zones cost actually. Right? Click on submit. 12 19, we are not done it. Transactions across the knowledge. Now we'll again make a miscellaneous transaction for the second transaction now. Click on the <clears throat> So it's again a miscellaneous result. Miscellaneous result. I made a miscellaneous result no, last time. Am I correct? Uh, am I correct? I'm not removing. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 5. Uh, 1, 4, 1, 0. So I'll not say no, no. Miscellaneous result, I'm making it on plus now. 
is a J10 underscore 2. Thank you, Vitap. And then put the sub over here now. So quantity is what? This time I'm going to receive what? 300 quantities at 110 price. So 300 quantities, I'm going to receive from 100 price. 300 quantities, and then click on edit, and then 110 is the price. So it's a different time. I'll click on edit cost details. I'll be I'll click on plus now. I'm going to make item cost over here now. Item price as 110. So click on OK. That's it. Click on OK and then submit it. Click on submit it. <clears throat> So it's not done. So we'll now make the final transaction of what? Uh, 250 at 120. Fine. Miscellaneous is a 250 at 150. I'm going to make it. So click on create miscellaneous transaction. I will now make it. Drop it down and then make a miscellaneous visit for this now. And then account is 01005. And then this is no now. <clears throat> then click on plus one. And then J10I underscore two now. J10 underscore two over there. The sub inventory is this sub inventory. And then the quantity is what? 250 at 120. So 250 is the one. If you're making a mistake, please correct me then and that. Otherwise, what happens? My simulation will not work properly at all. <laughs> Click on plus now. It is 120. Item price is 120. So we are now received at a different, different unit prices on this now. I will now push it into costing now. <clears throat> Submit it. I will now duplicate it. So it's transaction by go there, close the place. Let us know uh, what happens. Uh, push it into costing. I can give a cancel. <clears throat> you go to the home icon and then go to the tools and then uh, go to the schedule to process by which we will now push it into costing. At the, the tools, we will now run schedule process and then I am going to push it into costing. Transfer transactions from inventory to costing is a one. There is no receipt costing. Receipt is not there at all. And it is everything is inventory actually. Receipt will be coming only for what purchasing. There are three things on which receipt will be hit. When you make an intra transfers, receipt will be hit. When you make a what's called a purchase orders, the receipt will be hit. And then when the customer returns back, the RMA will also be hitting the gate as well as the suppliers supplies also will now hit the gate. So for these four transactions, we have to use the gateway that you have to transfer the transfer transactions from receiving to costing out. So I'm speaking a lot. When you run it, please take notes. Otherwise, what happens? It'll be very difficult for you to memorize it. Right? It'll know. Take some time for you to, till you become proficient, you have to rely on the notes. Actually. Transfer transactions from uh, inventory to cost. Go there, click on it. Fine. Transfer transactions to cost. I'm doing now. So I'm pushing it to the costing area. Fine. It'll now go and then land up on the interface tables of costing, of the cost management, actually. I'll go there. So it's a J10. Putting it now. Fine. Click on submit. So by which it'll now land up on this place. 587 is a concurrent. Go there. No running. So you'll now right click on the duplicate, and then you'll now go on and have a look at that. What I'm going to go there. So once when it is completed, we'll now go on and do it now. <clears throat> so we'll now go to the what's inventory man, inventory, supply chain execution, then go to the inventory. Supply chain execution, we'll now go to the cost according. Tell me, yeah. Somebody is saying something. Yeah, I am saying receiving to costing will be only be running when we are receiving something like procure from procurement or from, from purchasing or supplier from... returns or customer returns or, or transfers, transfers fine. or even the transfer orders also. Yeah. Whichever is applicable, uh, whichever is uh, hitting the gate, they will yeah, all And then you'll be running this transfer transactions on a periodic basis, so no need to practically run that. Everything will be running automatically. You'll be scheduling it actually. So transfer transaction inventory is costing is completed. Let us now create the distribution set. So distribution creation is very important from our side. The accounting may not be important because accounting is from financial perspective. And we will now do the accounting also. We'll now go there. Click on create cost accounting distributions. We are going to create it. So go there. J10 is the one. And then go tap. Starts with J10. Make a search now. And then it will not perform it. So go there. So click on schedule the process. Fine. Call it. It will not run it. So submit. <clears throat> it is not having any parameters for this. No, fine. So 589 is the one. So it is running. So in this concurrent slide, it takes extra time. Fine. It may take on one, approximately two minutes also. 589 will be done, running for creating the distribution set. So in the meantime, what happens, we'll now go there. Uh, I will now right click and then duplicate. And then I'll now show you to the, uh, but how to adjust the cost. Cost adjustments will have a look at it. You go to the subject and go to the cost. So the cost adjustments will now see. We'll now go to the review item cost. I'm going to adjust the cost. So cost management will be mainly concentrating on product costing. So product the costing is a very important one. And then we will be basically analyzing the gross margin. Basically, gross margin is a big one where we'll be analyzing it actually. <clears throat> uh, where is that? 
to be on the gross margin analysis is a big one as far as cost management because that is where the it is going to help that sales team to analyze it actually i don't know where exactly <clears throat> so here we go there and then uh, uh, gross margin analysis is the one which you have to talk to the cost accountants about how they are analyzing it actually so let us now go to the review item cost and then we'll now uh, review the item so here i'm going to make a search on it fine i will now say uh, it starts with this is a j10 is the one and then cost book starts with the j10 and then item equal to what j10 underscore cost underscore test is the item so the three ones any of them is okay fine click on search now review item cost ah cost book starts with that click on search <clears throat> we are searching for it what happens review item cost so the item cost is 0 0.80 my item cost is 0 0.0 now we want to what happens uh, bring it to 0 0.90 we want to bring it down, okay man? so i am now going to change the cost right? review item cost is the one i have so we will not perform an adjustment on this another point we will not perform an adjustment on this right? so manage cost adjustment so we have now reviewed the cost so go to the manage cost adjustment i'm going to perform adjustment so i'm going to create is, it this is yesterday scenario right? Yeah, 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 cost test is yesterday's one. Now, this item is 80, 80, 80 by 100. Yeah, yeah, 80 by 100, exactly. 80 by 100. Yeah, yeah. So, we can do for three types of things now. Fine. One is what? Perpetual average. One is the layered one, that is the actual cost, and then the reserved cost. So, we will now choose the perpetual average and then click on next one. So, cost adjustment can be done for this specific one. So, cost organizations, I will now say, starts with and then go there, J10. And then cost book starts with J10. And then item, uh, uh, item, I will now say put the item J10 <clears throat> underscore cost underscore test. I am not creating it. Click on search. I am going to search for it now. Click on search. We are searching for it. And then now we are in the process of adjusting the cost. And then go to the next. It is a, a train actually. We are in the search area. Now we are going to go to the adjustment. Thank you for next. We'll be going to the adjustment. So click on adjustment. So we are going to perform an adjustment on this. Click on adjustment. So it has come to the place. The reason code has to be populated. I will now right click and then there is a lookup for this now. Fine. I will now populate the lookup actually. With the lookup. Fine. Manage standard lookups is the one through which we can now very well. The costing reason code can be provided. So go to the place. I click on it now. And then you go to the search now. It's called manage star look, manage standard lookups. Manage standard lookups is the one, and there's a task name. Fine, go there, go inside. Manage standard lookups, I go inside, and then here I will now query for what percentage CST percentage reason percentage. Right? So I'm no query is a costing reason code actually. Fine, it is called a reason code. So CST is the one module name. Fine, click on search. <clears throat> Search for it when I say, see, the Hagir itself is coming in the one. So let me add one code. I will, you have to give a meaningful name now. Fine. Uh, I will not say, uh, uh, whatever is the remaining fact. Uh, I'm going say Nana adjustment. Nobody get to mind. So one of the, uh, you talk to the inclined and then accordingly do it now. Fine. This is what it means, and then this is what the description is. That's it. Now that will be coming in the list of values over there. Go there. Click on seven close. So we are now creating the code. Now, fine. If you go there, drop it down, you will not get that non adjustment over here. So that's coming. Fine. Give appropriate name and go there, choose it now. Now we can adjust the cost by three many ways. I can directly put in a cost, or I can say how much is the amount change or how much is the percentage change. So one of them you choose, the remaining two values will be automatically adjusted. If you say new cost is going to be 0 0.9, fine, 0 0.9, and then give a tap. So it will automatically say the amount change is 0.1, the percentage change is no. If you go there and then make a change, what 20% is a change, and then give a back tap, the remaining two will be automatically calculated. Right? So one of the three, if you put it, the remaining two will be automatically calculated. You can also amount change or percentage change or new cost. So let us put the new cost as what 0.9. That's it. Okay, good. So we have now done the cost adjustment. Fine, click on that. What's called after the adjustment is completed, you give a save. Now. So click on save. Better to put new cost. It is not better or best. Fine. Whatever the client says, you have to do it now. <laughs> Fine. It is not your uh, provocation. He says that, hey, I want to have a change of amount. Means you put that. Whatever he says, it's okay. Fine. Click on next moment. So click on next moment. Adjustment. I will now review and then submit. 
click on it so we are in the review and then submit panel so click on what i am going to submit it also remember whenever you have a thing you save and then submit also do not save and close now right changes for just were saved actually so if you save and close we have to come back and then submit remember so now itself you submit it when you submit it fine it gets affected actually submit it fine with a uh, cost adjustment number it is now giving 2020994 for cost process i don't know where to see this now so it is not done like that so afterwards what happens you have to run the create distribution again create uh, review or whatever you have to do that create cost accounting distributions to what happens activate you will not see whether the item cost is coming up or not point nine we are in now we'll go to the review item cost i think only when you create the distribution will be coming up <clears throat> so j10 underscore cost underscore test i'm not remembering it exactly you will not see whether it comes or not otherwise you have to create a distribution is it laid down now so okay when you when you receive when you run the distribution i think it will be coming anyway you will be running the distribution again now adre will again come back another way so in this place we go there and then have a look at comment so this create cost accounting distributions would have got completed create cost accounting distributions has completed i don't know why is ending in a warning i don't really understand this moment but all of the process are completed is not ending in a warning uh, but there were costing setup errors or transactional data warnings run status change from succeeded to warning what is the error i don't understand but will not see whether it works properly or not so we'll now go there and then review the what's called a distribution of thing on it we now review the distribution thing over so we'll now come up save and close and then come out of it and then we have now created the costing distributions and then we'll now review it now and review cost accounting distribution we'll go there so we'll now go there so here if you see on the area here now fine if you go to the inventory and then have a look at it now fine <laughs> if you go to the inventory and then have a look at it so there are three transactions are there the item cost is always the la the latest cost which has come in now suppose any question go to the inventory management and then if you query so go that one <clears throat> we'll now go to what uh, i will now go to the manage transactions now right? manage completed transactions review completed transaction i go there i will query for the item right? sir done. this is for miscellaneous or yesterday's so today's one only you know miscellaneous <laughs> miscellaneous transaction <clears throat> yeah yeah yesterday is complete and the cost adjustment is completed <clears throat> okay okay that you have to see okay so we got three transactions and then uh, what is the latest one now 1222 so 1222 we are now uh, done at, uh, at the rate of what at the rate of what i told you no we done it at 120 so that becomes the item cost actually the latest one will now become the item cost so at 1222 there is the one so we will go there and then click on the review item cost man before reviewing the item cost we will go on the search for it so what is it uh, such cost transaction click on the <clears throat> Woman, we will now go on and have a look at the item cost. Now, thank you for it. We are now reviewing the item cost for this now. So, go the item is what J10 underscore two is the one. Thank you for it. I will now make a search for it. You <clears throat> now see the item cost will be one twenty, and then the time will be twenty two. One twenty at twelve twenty two is the time. Twelve twenty two. So, the latest transaction will be the item cost. Actually, it is a late product. So, it is a late product means what? Whatever has come latest. It may be even ninety uh, also, sixty also, one to one fifty also. Whatever is there. So total twenty two. That becomes the item cost. What now? Now we'll now see the distributions of this. Okay, come on. We'll now have a look at the distribution. <coughs> Click on it now. We'll now go to the review cost accounting distributions and then query for the item now. We'll query for it. So item is what J ten. Let's go to. That was giving a warning. We'll now see whether it comes properly or not. Right? Come search now. J ten. Let's go to. <coughs> So the distributions we are creating it. It has to come as fully costed now. We'll now wait for it. <clears throat> Good. Fine. It is now fully costed. So all are three layered cost. They are three layered cost. So we have to go on and see. Is it fine? Now click on this one. Now go to the cost distribution. Now go to the cost distribution. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, actually, uh, the, this is happening because costing fully status uh, fully costed because uh, if you have done some previous transaction. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so receiving to costing will uh, will run those transactions also, and those transaction or previous transaction for that for those state it is we will show warning, but uh, it will not show warning, uh, but it will show here here fully costed. The reason is that mm -hmm. actually I have faced the same issue, but uh, uh, and the same error was coming that setup issue, but setup issue that was for showing for the previous transactions. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm. So you saying that Anand is now having some issues on this offline. He is saying that the receipt accounting uh, is uh, also clubbed along with it because of which what happens? There is no showing a warning. Okay, actually there is no real warning. So we have three transactions here. Now, fine, go that one. So in the first transaction, if you see, 
We have now transacted 500 into 10 is 50,000 rupees is the total value for that point. So 50,000 is coming. So the inventory valuation is debited and then the offset is offset is now getting and then okay. So it is not debit. So it is the, the offset account is also getting now. Debit and And the next transaction is what? At 33,000. So I will now go there. I will now go to the next level, next line now. The next line I'm keeping it up. It will be 33,000. It is 33,000. And then if you keep on the first line, go the first line, go there. That will be 30,000. So it's coming in the ultra way. I don't know. So it is a 30,000 account. Go there. Click on it. It will be 30,000. So all the results are. Now let me issue it now. Let me go on and issue it. You go there. Let us now issue it. Fine. Can you show this uh, review item cost for this transaction? No, no, no. It will show only one. No, fine. It is not transaction wise. Review item cost is what for whole? Fine. Review item cost. It is not transaction wise costing. Fine. It is item cost only. If you go there, it won't show two, three lines at all. The latest cost only will be shown over here as 120. I show right here. The latest cost is not shown as 120. Fine. The actual cost. You want to see it again? Okay. Go there. So we will now search for it. So review cost accounting distributions. We are now fine. Click on now. We will now go to the item cost also. For the review item cost. So item is Jaden underscore two. And then click on search now. Fine. So once when you search for it, you'll be finding it out. It will be only one single line. It will not show you three different lines actually. Only single line at 120. Last time. It shows you the asset value structure. Fine. Valuation structure is not showing you. Fine. My profile is what? Actual cost. Last transaction. Yeah. Huh? Last transaction which you did that cost. The last transaction, whatever has been, will be the uh, the, will be the cost of it. Mm. One second. Okay. Now let us now perform the issues. They are going to perform the issues. So customer A actually wanted how much? 500 shares. And then uh, he wanted what? 750 shares. And then customer B wanted 300 shares. So you are going to issue it now. You are going to perform an issue. So go to the um, order and go there. I will now go to this place. Let us now perform an issue. It is time sensitive. And so what happens? I am now making a different transaction. Actually. Different, different transaction. Drop it down. This time I am going to perform an issue now. So go there. Go to miscellaneous issue. And then account is what? 01005141010. This time, what happens? I will not say use current causes yes sector. I will not say no, no. So once when you say yes, it will now pick up layer by layer actually. It will now pick up layer by layer. Thank you, Tasma. It's going to pick up layer by layer. So J10 underscore 2 now. Sub is there. So 750 is a quantity. Shares numbers can be anything, it doesn't matter. But cost depletion is layer by layer. Cost depletion is layer by layer. So since I'm using the same cost, I need not have to go on an editing at all. Editing is not required. So 750. So when you ask for 750, what it will do, the system will do it what? 500 shares, which has been received first in first round. It will not allocate it because we are not receiving it. It will be allocating it all. So 500 shares are 100 will be allocated. The remaining 250 at the next layer, it will not allocate. Right off you know. So the total cost to the customer is what? 77,500. 500 is 50,000, 250 into 110 is 27,500. So customer has to pay 77,500 rupees. So because of what? A layered cost. You go there and then let us submit it. There is no need to edit details because I'm not going to enter any cost at all there. So click on submit. Submit again. So we are now completing the miscellaneous issue now. So similarly, what happens? We will now perform the second miscellaneous issue for the negative. Fine. Click on create miscellaneous transaction. Go there. So I will now drop it down. And then here, what happens? You go there, go to the miscellaneous issue. <clears throat> but again, put that one of it 01005. So I will now say yes now. Click on plus now. So it's Jaden underscore two now. Go there. So I'll now pop in the sub unit here. Man. Go there. So this time, for the second customer, we have, he is asking for how much? He has asked for only 300 now. So there is the only thing available also. 300 is only available. So we are going to issue now. That's it. Click that on this. That's it. So we are now done all the things. Now you will see when you push it into costing, it will now do what? Uh, you go there. So transfer transaction from minority costing is the one. Go there. Uh, I will now repeat, resubmit it. Transfer transaction minority costing. I'm resubmitting it. So this I'm resubmitting it. So that what happens? It will be having all the parameters basically. Fine. Cost org is a parameter. It's okay. Fine. It's okay. Thank you, sir.
So we are not running it now. Then otherwise, what happens? We long go and then create the costing distribution and go to the face. Let us now create the costing distribution for us. So re, uh, create cost accounting distributions. So we will now say we will now query our run control factor consumption are to be coming. And then I am going to click on the schedule to process on this moment. We are already given a cut off date till month end actually. So normally they will now take month by month actually January month first afterwards February like that. Normally they will do it. How they are practicing it? Talk to them. They will not do it. So you go there, go to this place. We will not see whether it is not complete or not. Fine. Transfer transaction or inverted costing is now running. So it succeeded. Now we will not create it. Now fine. Click on submit. Fine. It will be submitting it now. So click on submit. So here uh, six thirty nine concurrent is running for creating the distribution. So remember, distribution creation is a very important one from a supply chain perspective. Accounting is not that important. Fine. Accounting uh, let them do. Fine. But distributions must be proper. If they are not proper, then you have to look into it. Six thirty nine is a concurrent which is running now. So we are seeing the adjustment also. Fine. Right? We can even adjust any of the items. Fine. Right? There, the beginning itself, uh, uh, the thing is coming. Whether you want to adjust the perpetual average or the actual cost or whatever it is, and then accordingly you can make perform adjustment actually. So adjustment is completed. Now we are going to go ahead and then see this uh, FIFO costing, actual costing actually. Actual scenario, there would be many run controls. You have to select. Yeah, 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 yeah. You will be having many run controls for every cost. Cost book can run other cost organization. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, for every cost or cost book, we will be having a run control actually. That is why these are all very laborious task actually. It is not at all an easy one now. When you have so many. Actually, the other thing is that if, into one cost or cost book, I am again and again telling you. Like if you if you can. If you will be able to learn, also then also you need a financial guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, in one the in Man Investments Dubai, uh, they were having thirty five inventory or by mistake we created thirty five cost org and thirty five cost books. Do you know how difficult it is now? Uh, running it is all really really difficult actually. So try to consolidate everything into one cost or cost book, so that what happens, your work will become easy actually. The only disadvantage is what it will now club everything in your reporting. But you can very well write a BA report and then extract whatever you want actually. That is not at all a big problem. But people say that because of that only reporting, uh, they make individuals no fine. That is not at all correct actually. Reporting can be easily done. Clubbing is the best practice which Oracle is recommending. I have only one <coughs> profit center business unit, right? PCBU, one cost org, one cost book, and then put all the inventory org into there. You may have an 150 inventory orgs also. Doing job is easy. Otherwise, doing will be really very very tough actually. So the cost accounting distribution is running. So once when it is completed, what happens? You now go on and have a look at it. So previously we had three entries. Now what happens? You'll be having five entries now. Because we are now in two more issues now. Fine, there will be five entries for it on the distribution. And then on this area, if you see this place, fine. When we for the customer A, if you see that issue of seven fifty, it will now have two things now. Fine. So five hundred one entry, and then two fifty one entry, and then for the customer fifty one entry, and then two fifty one entry. Because in this one, we have already consumed the two fifty as for the costing is concerned. Fine, out of three hundred, we consume only fifty is remaining on this now. And then the fifty plus two fifty will be coming. So it will be two two entries for customer issues. Now issues will be having two two entries. One is five hundred, one is forty, and then one is fifty, and then two. But it is not on the main one. Uh, main line will only show only two two issues now. Fine, three receipts and two issues. But if you go further than have a look at it, you'll be able to see. So go there and see. Now fine, trade cost is now complete. Now fine, again in the morning doesn't matter. Fine, go there tomorrow. You will not again query. Now fine, one seven close and come out of it. <coughs> So here I will not go on and see what uh, review cost accounting distributions. I am going to review it now. Item is what J10. Let's go to review that. I think I'll search. So we'll be having five entries now. We'll be having five entries now. What about inside the issues? We'll be having two two. Go there. So there are five entries there. Everything is fully costed now. So go there. So we will not see. See, say if you see the bottom most one, that is what the receipt actually is the receipt. Fine, go there. Miscellaneous account. Fine, miscellaneous receipt. Fine, go there. That is the one. So that is already shown over here. If you go to the costing distribution, you can see it. Is over fifty thousand. And then next one is what thirty thousand. Next one is what 
33,000 and the next one is 30,000. So these are the three receipts. Now, the next one is for customer A. You see the customer A, you will now find 502. That is 50,000 and 27,500. You'll be able to see for the customer A. You go to the fourth one of 50 quantity. So there will be two entries. So if you go there, it is 502 quantities. On the final, if you see the, uh, the inventory valuation is 50,000. The inventory valuation is 50,000. And then the next one is what? 27,500. If you click on the next one, you can see it will be 27,500. Right? These are two entries. Okay. Similarly, if you go to the final one there, it will be 50 and 250. So go that click on the final one, final transaction comes there. So it is for 50 and 250. On the 50, you can see the amount of amount is about 5,500. 5, and then for the 250, 30,000. The 250, if you go on and see, it will be 30,000. So that way it works. <clears throat> so the item cost still is the last one. Now, if you do a create accounting, it will be splitting it into seven lines actually. If you do the credit account, it will not split into the online. Go there. So go there. So cost of money. Cost of money. Cost of money. So cost of money. Ledger is J10. Go there. That is the detail now. And then submit it. So click on submit now. So the process is now getting submitted. So I don't go there. But I am demonstrating with the miscellaneous issues and receipt that will not be correct actually. I got to have a real scenario about how they are doing it in the system actually. It is not a purchase order actually, remember? So it is not a purchase order. But real, if you have any real time example, please tell us so that tell the group about how the actual cost is basically processed. Hi, this was explained very well actually. But I just want to know uh, how the purchase order will be behaving. Can you just read a small briefing? I don't understand the purchase orders. No, fine. Uh, purchase orders because I'm unable to. The cost, if cost will be uh, differ, suppose some supplier, we have changed the supplier. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. item cost has been changed. So, yeah. how that will behave? Uh, I, the, you only have to make an RD of this, no, fine. <laughs> Because uh, I just for demonstration purposes, I made the miscellaneous issues the result. You go via PO and then I try try simulating it now. Fine. You now you understood now fine how it's behaving. Yeah, this was a great explanation. Now you only have to sit and then uh, what happens to do this now. So credit accounting is running now fine. Import journal child is running and we'll not succeed at that one. So we'll now see the report of it actually. So once when you see the report, you'll not find seven entries actually. When you are reporting it, what happens? It will not put separate, separate entries now, fine. So uh, the first three is for what? These three will be having an accounting entries. And then afterwards, uh, these two, fine, two, three plus two, five plus three, two, seven. So likewise, it will be accounted. Everything will be separately accounted because it's a layered cost. That kind of process will be similar for, uh, for uh, procurement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will also be similar, fine. But where exactly they use the actual cost, I am not able to understand this. That is not known to be clear. So nobody. And then subdated recordings are coming back. The execution report is coming back. Go there and then how it. So if anybody gives a real scenarios, real time scenarios, that will be nice actually. Only the, the way of doing is okay, is understood. But real time scenarios are required. So there's no complete time that you want. So you know how look at it. Fine. Any report can be very well published, republished actually. And click on the republish. Yeah. I'll republish. So there will be seven entries for this. Since everything is a separate, separate one. So a real-time scenario, Nana, uh, something like, uh, you no know, different, based on the industry specific, right? Maybe uh, uh, yeah. uh, when the item cost, when the, you know, uh, supplier, maybe the cost changes rapidly, right? So mm -hmm. then go with the okay. When costing changes rapidly, you have to use the actual cost, right? That is a very correct Actually, one. actually. Correct, correct. <laughs> yes, yes. No, 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 the best example is the uh, commodity uh, changes uh, right now. The commodity prices are very high for copper and other things. Uh -huh. that, that time it is uh, very useful because then your input cost uh, gone up uh, suddenly. Mm. And that should have reflection in your costing. Okay, okay fine, good. Fine. So it's a five-page report. You will not see that. The cost changes. I think perpetual average cost they use, right? Mostly. Yeah, yeah. Perpetual average is the no normal one. Then they will use actual cost. That is what we want to know. And, uh, the normal one which is being used. And EBS we had at uh, like you can use like in EBS we had either you can use standard costing or average costing at organization. Everything is same, fine. But the practical scenario I'm asking for. Generally the 
client uh, is going for average costing that's why see he is going to choose of course fine uh, normal is what uh, perpetual average is only is been chosen there is known as average is here it is known as a perpetual average nothing and there nothing difference at all but when to choose yeah, standard cost is basically you no know, go over the period of time the cost is same it is not going to be changed see i we are not uh, discussing upon when to use standard cost or when to use average cost but we are not discussing about when to use actual cost fine that is a, that is a question that nobody is able to answer now clearly so somebody told that copper prices are going to fluctuate rapidly so in that case whatever we can go for actual actual means what it is actual average remember actual cost is actual average of a first in first product go down now you know how look at the report now fine so there are seven events happen uh, what happens the number of events processes one is separate actually i don't want to cost adjustment okay that is what i made a cost adjustment now fine that is also processed from point a to point n there is also processed and then upon which the miscellaneous transaction of seven is processed now so the total is eight fine because eight everything is now over so it's all done now so the first one is what uh, if you see uh, inventory valuation to offset uh, uh, what is this now fine the entered debit is 10 and this is maybe for the cost adjustment i think right? manual cost adjustment is yes. cost adjustment so this is the adjustment unit adjustment that has been processed now afterwards what happens you know see 30000 is coming you can go there click on it now fine so you now see that 30000 is coming from where it is coming so the 30000 is now coming and this may be this one fine there are two 30000s now fine you know see the receipts are uh, done it or not or not so inventory valuation if it is a debited then what happens it is a receipt actually is a the miscellaneous issue is not showing here it is issue so issue of what issue of what about 30000 5500 so 30000 then 5500 so the issue issue afterwards what about you going to see the remaining two issues the issue of 21500 and then 30000 so this issue this issue this issue this issue four issues afterwards three receipts afterwards what about miscellaneous receipt of what 33000 and then afterwards you are 50000 and then one more so likewise it's coming So three miscellaneous receipts and then four miscellaneous issues actually. Miscellaneous four. Four issues and three receipts and uh, one adjustment. Ah, uh, uh, four issues and then uh, yeah, four issues and then three receipts and one adjustment. Right, correct. And that is all that is coming. It's all processed. And if you go on and look at that, uh, uh, what is called uh, item cost of that uh, cost test that would have got changed actually. Review item cost. So take one more time. So in order, I am in the review completed transfer. Know this one and go to the cost area. Go there. Click on review item cost because it is now accounted. So after accounting only, it is coming. Fine. Go to the review account item cost. Go there. Come on. And then uh, go on and query for the item. Fine. Ah, Santu. Underscore go there. So J10 underscore cost. Yeah. Underscore test. Fine. Please mute your mics now. Fine. If you are not speaking, please mute your mics. So now it will be point nine actually. This point nine. And remember, for cost adjustment, there is no need to separately create distribution. I am not sure about it. Have I done it? I'm not sure about it. Whether I, okay, I might have done for the miscellaneous issue. I done it now. Fine. So I done it. So it has. Uh, uh, maybe after distribution only I had accounted. Very good. <clears throat> after distribution only. After getting the distribution only I had accounted. Now you have changed from eighty to ninety. That's why their ten is showing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Point eight to point nine. I made it now. Fine. And then uh, I have created the distribution for the other ones, and so it is not showing us. So this completes your cost adjustments as well as your actual cost FIFO. The next topic is what standard cost. <clears throat> no, you there is actual cost, average cost, and standard cost, right? Yeah. Actual cost, average cost, and standard cost. So we are now tested the actual cost. We are tested the average cost also, and then now we are going to go for the standard cost. So now, organization can only be either standard cost or average cost. Of course, once when you perform a transaction on this, now fine, you cannot change the costing method at all. Fine. Costing method cannot. Once when the transactions are complete, then you cannot change the costing method at all. We have seen it now. That is not possible at all. At all. So why this point A to point nine made it ten uh, in the hundred <laughs> quantities, na? Hundred quantities. So that is why ten was the uh, amount actually. That is the amount actually. That is the, actually the same I asked because here that was showing ten. So ten dollars is what point A to point nine is point one for hundred quantities is ten dollars. Okay. Remember again, the quantity is only hundred and not eighty actually. Only the price, uh, the payment is eighty because of which what happens? No come there. Uh, inventory valuation is only eighty. Sorry, no. Inventory valuation is only eighty. Yeah, Santosh. Hello, yeah. hello, please. Uh, huh? Your mics. Your mics. Hindi. Costing method cannot be changed only for 
Okay, I am now muting everybody. So whenever you are not talking, please mute now. Fine, again and again. Tell me, I tell me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Costing method cannot be changed once when the transaction is complete. Now, fine. Yeah, that, See, that is only at the item level, right? But the org level, we can update it. Right? Default profile you can change. Default profile, cost profile. Cost profile can be changed, but item cost, cost profile cannot be changed. Got it? So when you make a change of the default cost profile, then with that it will now work, start to work. For a cost or cost book combination, we can change the default cost profiles. Please take note when I am speaking. I am taking a lot. So somebody take notes of it now. <clears throat> that will be very useful for you when you go there. Now we have to go for a standard cost. Now. So standard cost, the one thing. No, no, just confused. Like an item can be standard cost. Second item can be average cost in the same yes, order. Every item can have very higher cost. So here we have a default cost profile of what? Average cost for us, right? For us, average cost. Now, uh, I have now created an item and then set it to actual cost and then I demote it. Now I will now create another item and then set it to standard cost and then I will not demote it. Okay. Here on this one. One question. Tell me. No, actually, uh, you have done uh, yesterday 20 has been write off. Yeah. Okay. 20 quantities have been written off on the accrual actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from accrual. And Yesterday also it was showing uh, 80 by 100 is equals to 0.8. Exactly. Now, yeah. Today, uh, yesterday we have also run accounting and everything. Now today only we have done from 0.8 to 0.9. That's it. And no other changes has been done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, but again, I, on the actual cost, I didn't. But in the actual cost, it doesn't reflect on the inventory valuation. I don't know why. I thought that it will be reflecting it now. Inventory valuation is not reflected at all. You will not see on the material account whether anything is different or not. You will now go to the what that area. Fine. The costing area, inventory valuation is not at all hit by this one. I don't know why. Good question. Fine. Go there. You will now see on the inventory valuation. You will now go on and have a look at the inventory valuation. Go there. You see inventory on hand. Go there. So you will now go to the uh, inventory management. So once when you go to the management, there will be an info tile available there now. Fine. Go there. So here, the on hand value is 90. 80 to 90 has got increased now. But what happened to that uh, actual cost value? We have received through miscellaneous, na? Why it is not coming here? I couldn't understand this now. Come on. So this is actually only financial guys have to step in and tell us now. <laughs> yeah. Where we have received from miscellaneous? Received, na, actual cost. I made this much of a reserves now. I made this much of a reserves now. So, but we issued also, no? We issued also. Yeah, you are very correct, actually. We have issued also. That is why it is not reflecting on it. Very good, very good. The entire thing is issued out. Maybe you check as soon as you make a result, you check the online value before issuing. We have not seen it. Now, fine. Very correct, very correct. Who is this? Sir Shweta. Shweta. Shweta is excellent now. Fine. She since we issued out the the value is not changing actually. Yes, very correct. So after you make a result. You make a check of the on and also fine. In your when you're doing the practice, you make a check of the on. Good, good, good. Okay, fine. So any other questions on this now? Fine. Uh, any other questions on that? One question, one question on the layer costing, sir. Yeah, yeah. 300 has been uh, split into 250 plus 50, right? Can you explain uh, once more? First customer is asking for 750 quantities. And we have bought like this now. 500, 300, 250 at different different prices. So for the first customer, whatever the system will not take up this 500 at this price of 100 and then the remaining 250 it will not take up at this price of 110 got it so okay so 100 plus 50 and then 50 is remaining in this layer actually for this next customer of 300 it will not take up this 50 for him and then 250 so it is 500 and then 250 the next customer will got 50 and then 250 okay okay uh, yesterday case you were checking material and evaluation material evaluation what is it uh, for yesterday, actually, you have changed from point eight to point nine. Yeah. So on hand should also be increased, na? No, no, no. On hand is not only valuation account, na? Fine. Account valuation only has got increased to point eight to point nine. Fine. It on hand, it was showing eighty dollar. It was not show ninety dollars now. Fine. Where it was showing now eighty dollars now. Fine. Tell me. It is not showing everywhere ninety only. In the costing area, in the cost account area. Fine. It is also. Yeah. You, oh, here it is not still showing eighty only. <laughs> One second, let me come out and then do it. Na? Inventory valuation, it does not come out and then come back to the costing area. So you don't go there. Go to the inventory management and then here, uh, not inventory. Go to, go to the cost management. You don't go to the cost management. When cost according to it has to show me 90. Now. It has to show me 90. Now. It is not showing me. Okay. It has got changed. 
So Sweta is very correct that what happens is since I issued out, it is not reflecting on the inventory valuation at all. On and uh, will show the complete uh, total value of the inventory org. On and of course, yeah, the total the total value of the inventory order. This is the total value of the inventory. Inventory valuation is only on and actually. The total inventory valuation. And when you make a sales order, the gross margin will come into the picture actually. The gross margin will be coming to it. And there's a very big one. Picture. Gross margin is a very excellent one. And then this analysis uh, will be big actually. Gross margin analysis is also very big on the cost of the area. And then I don't find any navigation for the gross margin actually. Do you find anything here? There is no navigation property. You don't have any navigation for the gross margin analysis. Maybe it will be coming on a what's called a, a, a ESS job only. Maybe. On the ESS job, we are doing it. But now we go to standard cost. <clears throat> so, average cost, say, let's say, if you receive 100, 100, the total value is 10,000. And then if you receive another 100, 200, so 10,000 plus 20,000 is 30,000. So, 30,000 divided by 200 is 15. Uh, 150 rather. So it gets averaged out as and when the transactions comes in. And then if you feel that the average cost, whatever is reflecting it, what happens if it's not correct, then you have to perform what? Review it, or you have to perform the cost adjustment. So there is a concept called variance now. Right? On the standard cost, the purchase price variance will be hit. Whereas on an average cost, the variance is really very complex actually. Right? I have demoed it in uh, EBUS, but I don't have the patience to demo it now. Right? Average cost variance is a very big one. And then uh, uh, I will not show you that one. I, I don't know where exactly I kept it. There's a big one. I, I have demoed it in the EBUS basically. And completely I demoed it. And then I even recorded that as a report file actually. And, uh, I will not show it you. Mind. You also try simulating it. Exactly, exactly the concepts are all the same only. It has got three different types of variances actually. I'll go to the three now. Mind. I'll go for the e-business. And then do you get a variance in average cost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the variance in average cost also. That is a big one. So yeah, Oracle has got a white paper on this now. Fine. How to how, how the variance will hit now? Fine. It is not a normal variance. It's a it's a special case variance actually. Beautiful document. And then I have simulated it also. Uh, no, no, artwork training. Go there. This place. Uh, where did I simulate? Maybe in manufacturing, I think. Uh, manufacturing training. Yeah, manufacturing. I go there. Yeah, in the manufacturing, average cost varies. You see, this is the one. Average cost also has got a variance. Fine, that. I have, there are seven different scenarios available. Oracle has got a white paper. From that, I have demonstrated it also. An analysis is made on the variance on average costing. It was tested in the M3 organization. Fine, that. So here it is done in seven steps actually. A miscellaneous result is made for 10 quantities at 30 each. So this is how it will be hitting now. Fine, that. So inventory metal value is debited and then miscellaneous account is debited. Fine, that. Afterwards, now issue five quantity at 40 each. So go there. So when you shoot out, what happens? You go there and then see it. You know, and, and then afterwards, whatever the item cost is three displays. All costing transactions in descending chronological like order. It will not display like this one. Afterwards, third of us issue another three quantities. This time the variance will be hitting. Variance account is credited. So the variance are going to be credited. So it's all done now. Fine. And then you go on and see on the cost history, you cannot see this now. Variance and variance will come The new online value cannot be negative if new online quantity is positive. The negative cost will become a fan. You have to read this document now. So let me put this uh, document over there. This is almost the same. It is exactly the same like what we have now. Then the fourth issue is what? Issue for quantities. And then we are going to bring it up now. Fine. When you bring it up, how the values are getting now. Click on it. And then issue two numbers for this one. And then uh, fourth scenario, sixth scenario. I have demoed it. I don't even have that record with me. I don't know whether I have posted the record or not. I'm not sure about it. Uh, but I demoed it. <clears throat> sixth one. And then after the seventh one, let me do one thing. I will not save it to our file now. So I will not take this off. I will not put it on the house. You have a look at it. Fine. Whenever time permits, you go and then have a look at it. So go there. And then it's a mean one, 22. And then I will not number it later on. Average cost variance fixed concept. So then the lab exists. If somebody has got the patience to go on and simulate it, it will be excellent, actually. That's on this note. <clears throat> we'll now go for an early break and then uh, we'll now come back and then start the standard costing on this note. Average costing also has variance. And that variance is really very, very complicated actually. And you know, many people suffered because they don't know this variance at all. And I've seen students go, sir, the cost has come to zero. That is the biggest problem. When you're working on the average costing 
and then when you make some random transaction the cost will now come on and report as zero and if you look at the file the zero will be clearly explained actually why you are getting the zero three four students in the past eight years they have reported i told them immediately go on and adjust it so when you get a zero you have to adjust it that is the only way never go average cost is actual cost right how how and various can be generated you watch that they think now right you watch that and then it will not tell you clearly about why the variance take place okay so average cost has also got a big variance and then many people will be suffering because of what cost getting reported as zero actually on the now first gear me zero dikhara me babre that is not a thing fine whenever it shows zero you are immediately adjust it no other don't think about it i only give this file only so three four guys reported to me <clears throat> average cost has come to zero <clears throat> and then uh, so at the time you only have to manually adjust and then start the process again and then you have to keep a track of what was the actual cost before it gone to zero then afterwards you can now correct it to exact values and that is a preferred costing method uh, in every implementation nobody goes for sand costing at all nobody is they prefer only average cost so good then now it is at 640 i will now go and then come back at 7 o'clock 7 pm india fine right? you be here so 7 pm india will be back on this Any other questions on this now? Otherwise, I'll we'll stop this now. Then, will you use the same organization, or will you create a new organization for standard? Organization will be same. Only item will be new. I don't want to create a new. But, but in EBS, it is a different, right? It is at organization level, right? Like me. Yeah, yeah. We don't have any item level profile. Okay, fine. It's all a dog level. You're very correct. Vinay Rangana is very correct now. So in EBS, we cannot change the costing method at item level at all. You can change. You can have here. Yeah. If an org is there. an org has to be kept uh, one on one method for org actually once when cost enabled items are assigned to the org itself that itself it will not allow you to change here it's not so once in the transactions are done it not allow you so on the same org i demonstrated uh, perpetual average i demonstrated actual cost also now i am going to demonstrate standard cost also the same org because at the item level i am going to make a change got it nana nana is there a way to maintain the cost profile at the item class level or another level then maintaining it at the individual item level individual items you are maintaining it now fine yeah is there another level between no. item and uh, organization between and all no levels between item and then the org level there is nothing fine only these two are there okay and that too what happens the, the cost test item is now transacted on the average costing and so now that cannot be changed because that is already done fine that is now series only thing is you have to go for a default cost profile and then change it and then make it now yeah okay so, uh, when we do this uh, standard cost uh, the cost the price it will take the item price from the item setup and uh, for the uh, for the actual mm -hmm. cost also I, the item it will not be taken from the item setup fine from the standard cost setup it will not take up the price up. because we are going to publish the standard cost so once when you publish it that becomes the we'll not see it after break okay you know how it works okay any other dates doubts on the present session actually one question actually tell me we have done for actual cost we have done transaction yeah actually my my doubt is uh, from point a to point 9 yeah. as as shweta said He, uh, when we will do uh, simultaneously receipt and issue, mm. the the valuation will get changed. Of course. And the today we have uh, made different item, and yeah. for that we have uh, put cost profile as actual cost. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, and yesterday the uh, was there was a cost profile was average cost. Hmm. So Uh, yesterday the cost profile was uh, for item we have done the cost profile was for average costing yeah 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 so uh, if we are do if we are checking the inventory evaluate evaluation hmm. and uh, one item is for actual cost and one is for uh, cost yeah 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 average costing so the valuation uh, the valuation of valuation is a physical valuation na fine physically how much of quant is there at what cost it is it based upon which the valuation is coming in which So valuation does not worry about the method of costing actually. Okay, valuation is a is a total quantity and then the total value is valuation actually. 
as per as per the setup we have done. Yeah, yeah. Means valuation will now keep on increasing and decreasing. It doesn't matter which item is of which cost method. No friend, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so briefing that if we would have not done issue, so mm. point nine for the rest of the evaluation and. Uh, oh, no, the point nine we have never transacted. Now fine that. Uh, uh, cost test item we have never transacted so that, so that that is that is on the inventory that that same i am saying that if we have not done the issue yeah okay issue, so for the the issue today, huh? Fine. today so so the, the valuation would have been changed it will be on the point nine only of course if you make an issue it will be on the point nine. if you want to override on the transaction itself you can say do not use the uh, item cost then you can override also then how that can that can how point nine can be used for today's uh, for today's Why item because you not uh, tested that item at all, no? Fine. No, item was different, no? Ah, item was different. So that point nine is for cost test item. Yeah, yeah. That item we have never tested at all. Okay, okay, fine. Got it. That item we have never tested. Any other doubts from anybody else? We have only used J ten underscore two. Fine. <laughs> Now you're going to use J10 underscore three for standard cost. Okay? So you'll now go back for a break and then you'll now come back in by 7 p.m. India. Okay? You, be, you be here, I will be back. I'll now have a coffee and come back. So Nano said, uh, we, we, we're going to study about uh, standard cost uh, uh, process after this uh, break. At 7 p.m. you'll now study the standard cost. Okay, thanks. Man. I'm coming back. <laughs>